Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we'll be undertaking the topic of chain drive and how it is used and implemented on a mechanical type main engine. So let us start. As we know that the traditional, that is the mechanical type engines which work on the philosophy of crankshaft and camshaft need an intermediate arrangement that transmits the motion of the main crankshaft, that is the rotational motion, into the different components. And why is it used? It is used because through this motion itself, we need to drive as well as keep the timings aligned for different components. For example, we need to operate the fuel pump and the fuel walls in synchronism with the motion of the crankshaft and that is the simultaneous motion of the units inside the main engine. Also similarly, we need to drive the camshaft which is responsible for the operation of the exhaust walls in synchronism and to convey this rotational motion from the crankshaft to the camshaft and other different intermediate parts, it is important that we have an assembly that transmits this motion and that is where the chain drive comes into play. The chain drive is an important element because not only does it helps us to transmit this motion but as I earlier emphasized it helps us also to understand, adjust and maintain the timing of the engine that is the timing of the different components to which this rotational motion is being transmitted. So to further understand about chain drive we first need to know how and why it is different from the other mechanism that is used in the mechanical type engines which is the gear drive assembly. So the chain drive helps us with a higher order of flexibility. When I mean higher order of flexibility, I mean that in gear drives, everything is rigid and it needs direct replacement in case of wear down. However, for chain drive, we have a certain margin of error and we have a huge scope of adjustment of the chain with respect to its tightening or slackening. So now that we know that we can tighten or slacken the chain accordingly, that means we can have a better degree of comfort in adjusting the timing of our different components. We also know that with the addition of the intermediate gears in the gear drive assembly, the entire engine starts becoming bulkier and the weight of the transmission parts becoming heavier means that the losses will be more and the heat generated and the noise generated will be more, which is also eradicated with the help of a chain drive. Also, because of the smoother turnaround, it means that frictional wear and heat losses are lesser in the chain drive assembly. Also, it is very important to understand that for engines which are mechanical in nature but larger in size, that is the stroke length is larger, we need to keep the camshaft as high as possible to make sure that the hydraulic transmission time for the different hydraulic parts is lowered. But if we are using gear drive then due to the number of intermediate gears that we'll be using, this will not be possible. However, for a chain drive, this is possible where you can keep the camshaft as high in the engine as possible and still transmit the rotational motion and keep the timing aligned by properly aligning the chain and without losing the efficiency of your engine. So that means for large engine size designs, chain drive is much more compatible and much more efficient. And also because the chain can be engaged at different points of locations within its entire length. So it can also be used to engage subsidiary drives. For example, the lubricator or the governor, these all can simultaneously be driven by the same chain and hence the timing of all will be interdependent and adjusting the chain will simply adjust the timing of different components in synchronism. So all subsidiary drives can be accommodated within the same chain drive assembly. To further understand about the chain drive assembly, we need to subdivide it into two parts. First, where we'll be discussing about the different large components or the main scale components which are involved within the drive and then we'll be further dwelling into the design and the different parts of the chain itself. So let us start. The chain drive will have major components in the form of the crankshaft which is the main driving assembly and converts the reciprocating motion of the different parts, different units within the main engine and transmits it in the form of rotational motion for further usage. Thereafter, the chain then picks up this rotational motion as it is weaved around this crankshaft on the teeth or what we also known as the external sprocket design which is overlapped on the crankshaft and then further is weaved around the camshaft. The camshaft as we already know will be responsible for driving different components for example the hydraulic drive for the exhaust valve actuation and also an intermediate shaft will be employed to drive the fuel pumps with the help of the cam and the follower mechanism. 
the other parts which are involved within this construction will be the chain guides which help to create a passage for the chain and guide it through to the assembly where it is needed to transmit the motion and these guides or these sidebars also help us in providing the or attaching the lubricator quills or nozzles that are helpful for lubricating and cooling the chain and the chain drive as such so as to make sure that during its normal operation the chain remains thoroughly lubricated and the temperature of the operation does not go too high. We will also have an intermediate wheel with the tensioning arm and the chain tightener and this entire assembly will help us to further adjust and change the free length of the chain so as to make sure as I had emphasized earlier that the timing of the entire drive assembly and the different components remain within the limit. Now that we have understood clearly what the chain drive and the major components within the chain drive look like and what are their different roles. We should now further move on to understand what the chain looks like and how it functions. So within the chain we will have major elements which will be known as the roller link, the pin link, the roller, the pin and the bushing. Now let me help you understand how this entire thing functions but before that the material which is used in construction of the chain itself is the nickel chromium molybdenum steel which is used for the roller links and the chromium molybdenum steel is used for bushing. So as you can see over here the roller link will have two adjacent rollers and the pin link will have two adjacent pins like these. What we know already is that the roller should be free to rotate because the chain does not need to be rigid in nature and once it is engaging that is the roller part is engaging with the sprocket teeth or the drive teeth it should be free to rotate and well lubricated. So now the roller as we know will be rotating on the bushing which is obviously visible within this construction. Then what is the pin useful for? So as we can see over here that adjacent roller links need to be connected in tandem to make sure that these roller links further construct an entire chain. Then how do we provide this continuity? That is where the pin link comes into play. The pin link contains two adjacent pins and these pins are riveted at ends and thus what it does is it creates an external clamping like assembly or a riveting like assembly which ties down these roller links together without affecting its freedom or its rotational motion. So that is how we connect them together and form an entire chain. Then how are these bushings press fit? They are simply put into place and as I said the word press fit itself implies that they are fit in cold condition and then slowly allowed to expand which is the normal nature of the press fitting process and then they form the internal side of the entire roller assembly. Also to understand the process flow of how this consists, this is how it goes. The pin link will have two pins that are riveted between the two side plates one roller link will have two rollers that will be free to rotate on the bushing. The bushings will in turn be press fit into the two side plates. The pin is then fit within the bushings of two adjacent roller links. And these pin links will be adjacent to each other as well. Then alternate links will be riveted together with the external assembly. That means by this flow process we will be able to constitute the entire chain. It is also a common question on the topic of chain drive to understand what is the pitch of a chain or how the pitch can be measured for a chain. So in a nutshell we can see that the distance between the two pins that is the center line axis of the two pins and the distance between them is called as the pitch of a chain or the chain drive and by default it would also be the distance between the center line axis of the two roller bushings. So any of these terminologies can be used to define the pitch of a chain. Furthermore, chain drives as already discussed offer us a high degree of flexibility to adjust tension of the chain and thus make sure that the timing of the entire engine remains in order. So the maximum limit for this including most of the mechanical type engines is 1% of the entire length of the chain. That means any deviation underneath this limit can be adjusted by manually tensioning the chain or adjusting the tension of the chain. How is it done? It is done with the help of the adjustment arm, sprocket and tension bar and there is an entire manual process of carrying out the change in the tensioning of the chain. 
within this adjustment arm and the sprocket and the tension arm assembly, you will have the lock washers which will be locking the nuts A, B and C and D. All of these are help for first of all compressing the spring which exerts the tension and thus alters the tension of the chain itself and then lock it into that position to make sure that inevitably this compression does not change because of the mechanical aspects. As already told that the spring and the spring force will help in adjusting the tension and keeping it locked as it is and then to counter any backlash or the back pressure or the back thrust you will have a thrust piece will be protecting the different components of the entire assembly from the damage that can inevitably occur because of the nature of the job that this component does. How the tensioning process is carried out and what are the different steps involved in it we'll be discussing in a different video altogether. I hope that this in detail video helps you to understand the importance of a chain drive, the use of the chain drive within the mechanical engines to transmit the motion and to keep the engine running to understand the different components and also to understand the chain itself better and identify the nomenclature of the chain. Please make sure to continue watching the second part of the video and furthermore understand at a better level how the tensioning process is carried out. Also do not forget to like and subscribe our channel and visit our other playlists of equal and higher importance as well. Thank you.